Oh, Summer Slam, Summer Slam, Summer Slam. What do I have to say about this show tonight after we sat through this, huh? There's a lot of things to sit through and say. Well, I should just say, say through this six hour show. A very long six hour show. And I sit to myself, and this is what you're going to hear a lot of like tonight. You're going to see this a lot of title changes burials dead crowd and a few good matches I'll give it that and even I kind of wanted to myself was NXT Brooklyn 3 better than SummerSlam that's a good question but let's kick off the show pretty much the pre-show in a very empty arena pretty much which barely nobody was in there yet and they haven't entered it Almost like Tag Team Apocalypto or some said on the internet, like the TNA Impact crowd, um, where the Hardys were. We kicked it off with the Hardys and Jason Jordan versus pretty much Miz and the Miz Taraj. There's not a lot to say from here. The Hardys were over whoever was in the arena that did the leap chance of Brother Nero, but this was basic 50 50 booking, okay? And some t the reason why I kind of think they put this match on the beginning first for one instance. A, because we know how Jason Jordan isn't over, and so they probably didn't want him to get booed out the building, really. So I think that's a one reason why I believe they put this match on first on the pre-show. But then again, it was very early, super early to put this match on the pre-show. Pretty much Miz hit the Skull Crusher finale on Jason and was over. But yeah, just just basic 50-50 booking. It wasn't much to say from this. This is the same match we saw on Raw. So that's their first 50-50 booking of the night. Next thing you know, another match that uh, the arena was barely in here all the way, but since they want to put the 205 commentary team on here, um, Akira Tozawa versus Neville for the Cruiserweight Championship, which was a good match, but once again, back to my statement of 50-50 booking, okay? Neville pretty much regained the title, Ray Arrow, after pretty much um, dodging the Sentine, and... Neville got the belt back. What was kind of the point of this? What was the point of Neville even losing on Monday now if he was going to get the belt right back? I don't understand with him, you know, messing up the whole title reign. He had a very long title reign, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. And then you kind of wonder who else is on the Neville level now since you beat Tozawa. Who else has a chance at this? Because, hey, Aries left. I don't really see a lot of people on here. They've all became the transition champions. And I don't really see the Cruiserweights a lot. I don't know who they'll pick next to push. But then again, this match really didn't make no sense. This is another basic ba basic, ba basic, 50-50 booking here, okay? It was just, okay, he won it Monday, so you win it back tonight. And then again, I've already, you know, I've buried Cruiserweights many times. But then again, it's like I said, who really cared? It's almost like it was a half-empty arena still when Neville won the title. And even if it was a full arena, most of the time the fans are just quiet on their hands when they see a cruiserweight match. Don't care unless some type of a big spot happening. So never won the belt back, but it just didn't really make a lot of sense for him even losing it to begin with. Just basic 50-50 booking. Uh, one thing I will add was Elias coming out there singing about Brooklyn and singing a song about him, which was pretty catchy. You know, they suck and they lost their balls, which I thought was a catchy song in a way. So it was pretty good generate a lot of heel heat really good but uh the best thing on this pre-show which this match should have been on the um main show was the new day in the usos new day cut a promo they all looked like red lanterns i thought there was another dragon ball z character reference but uh i believe um byron saxon said they look like the red lanterns from you know you know green lantern blue lanterns it's a lot of them but they were the red ones um and i think it was cool these Two teams mostly always have a great match with each other. This was very great. Best match in probably the whole night. One of my favorite matches of the whole night was this tag team match. Uh, they killed it. It was really innovative from Woods picking up Big E, showing the strength of Woods. Like, yeah, by the way, it was Woods and Big E and that Kofi from the Ali Oop thing of one Uso knocking Woods out of the ring into a Samoan drop on the outside. Um, I like I said, the electric chair shot, the um, Usos um, running off the term off the barricade on the Big E, Big E doing that spear outside the ring or some type of suicide dive. Woods hitting tornado DDTs on the outside. Um, from it was a lot of great spots here from the multiple super kicks into the you know double splashes on Big E winning. 
which pretty much the Usos regained the Tag Team Championships from New Day. <clears throat> now, I was going to say 50-50 booking for a reason here. A, because they just did this match on Thursday. Uh, not Thursday, Tuesday on SmackDown, but it was B um, Kofi and Woods. But then again, I'm trying to count back the Battleground, because A, the New Day won there, so B, the Usos win here. So I was going to say 50-50 booking, which I, in a way, was kind of backwards when you look at. I still think the Usos should have regained the Battleground, and then the New Day wins tonight at SummerSlam. I would have gone with that idea, really. <clears throat> that, that's what I would have thought, but this is probably one of the best matches of the night. Um, innovative, the tag team always killed it, and he, they had a lot of time out there. And the, the tag team match is just awesome. I just think this should have been on the main show. It is really should have main, been on the main, not the pre-show. But they had a very great match out there, just like last time in Battleground. <clears throat> um, one thing I guess I'll add on was almost once again to keep doing these chicken commercials for some reason with KFC, and. One thing that caught my eye was who was in it from Ziggler to Enzo, Goldus, Big Show, Mojo, Becky, Slater, and Truth. So be Colonel Sanders, which I feel like half of these people are either on the brink of retirement or being released from this company. They start fighting over it. Next thing you know, Shawn Michaels of all people shows up. I wish you would have something better to do with SummerSlam. But Shawn Michaels shows up as Colonel Sanders just does his entrance, so I don't know where they were going with that. But that pretty much ended the pre-show from there. We kicked it off with the main show for SummerSlam with John Cena and Baron Corbin. First off, this crowd did not care. You're going to see that a lot tonight. This crowd was very dead for Brooklyn. And I'll say this about Brooklyn too, especially when they kicked off the show. It's funny how NXT uh, TakeOver Brooklyn 3 was so insane last night at the beginning of the show for Johnny Gargano. And Andre Almas with a very half reaction for this match with Cena and Corbin. And it was hot last night. And Corbin tried to do that choke slam into a backbreaker, which looked kind of sloppy in a way. And he was beating up Cena throughout the match, but like the crowd did not care. And you had a Where's Your Briefcase chant going, which uh, Cena pretty much, um, you know, he did a five knuckle shuffle and. After the whole deep six thing, he did FU1 and won the match after, you know, Corbin started tearing off his shirt, which, you know, I know people are going to call him a skinny fat bastard because he looks like one in a way, so Cena won with FU at ease. John Cena wins because John Cena wins. I don't know where you go from Corbin with this, because this, the match was okay at best, but it looked like nobody cared. Where do you go with Corbin? You already screwed him out of the money in the bank and looked like the biggest goof in the world. And now he couldn't even beat Cena at SummerSlam. So what, what are you going on with this guy? Like, for real. I don't I don't have an idea. Like, because in a way, I want to say he was buried right here. Like, he was literally buried. So wh where do you go with Baron Corbin after this? Like, no money in the bank. No um, win over Cena at SummerSlam. And I felt like Cena needed to get the win anyways. Because, you know, he's had a very bad win-loss record at SummerSlam. And... Some people think the reason why he was the first person on this show because I think he had to go somewhere anyways, take a flight, so that's why he just did his match as quickly as possible. But yeah, Cena, he, he just won just because it just wasn't a lot to care about. Uh, next was, I felt like both women had had a tough spot throughout this tonight. And this this had to do with a lot of women's match uh, when I explain later on. But Naomi versus Natalia for the SmackDown Women's Championship, which this was an okay match. I thought it was pretty good but once again the crowd sat on their hands and did not care I think a problem with this feud is that it wasn't focused on enough and you could get Natalia was in it at one point and it looks like they were so focused on Carmella and cashing and money in the bank it's almost like you forgot about Naomi and Natalia which it wasn't a bad match I didn't really expect Natalia to win and I am kind of glad Natalia won because a for once in you know, a very long time it says six years since she's had a title but yeah, they, 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 I've always felt that they've made Natalia look like a joke in some point in time throughout the years that she's a great wrestler. I just felt like they never put on a caliber. So I was actually surprised to see her win because, you know, they, they were always wasted. I always felt, and I'm kind of glad she did get a, a big win right here and finally got the title for once in a while uh, for Natalia. Now, I do believe that it should have been... Naomi versus Charlotte, and I think it could have been a way better match, in my opinion. But it's not like Natalya can't keep up, and Natalya's a great worker, so, um, yeah. But it just, 
I didn't really expect it, and even though I kind of look back at it now, when uh, Naomi was about to start the match, it looked like she kissed the title. I kind of almost told you that she was losing it right there. And, you know, as for her title reign herself, the uh, Naomi had a lengthy title reign, but who did she really face throughout this whole time? Like, she had a good match with Charlotte on SmackDown, but then we were doing these fatal five-way women matches trying to get her a, a number one contender and stuff and then you're doing these very joke matches with Lana that made no sense um it's like I feel like Naomi needed the right opponent to have a really great match I still think it could have been Charlotte I still think <clears throat> Natalya and her put on a a good to okay match but I like I said well I think they focus so much on the money in the bank thing that you forget you had these two um part of your um show almost I felt like this few could have been focused on enough, but hey, I am kind of glad. I am glad um, Natalya got a big win for once. We'll probably see a rematch in the future. Next was probably the worst match of this entire night. One of the most god awful things ever was Big Show versus Big Cass with Enzo in a shark cage. Number one, they give Enzo too much mic time again talking. Talking about New York and Diddy and Lil Kim, which he's not even from New York, he's from New Jersey, by the way. And Cass comes out, and then Big Show, which we gotta protect Show because his hand is hurt and broken by the cage door. And let me tell you what I saw throughout most of this match. Number one, Enzo was so loud, I could hear him more than the commentary. Commentary. Most of the time, it was just him saying, Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. Gonna, yeah, you, what's, what's happening now there, uh, you know, um, uh, Cass, Big Show's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. And. First off, the crowd started chanting, this is boring. There was a lot of boring chants. The only thing they really popped for was when Enzo took off his clothes and put on baby oil, slipped through the cage, and what happens? He gets his head kicked off like usual. So it's like every time Enzo enters the ring with Cass, he gets his head kicked off and that's it. So what, what purpose does Enzo serve? Seriously, what purpose is he serving to being annoying? And then he just big booted uh, Big Show two times and hit him with Empire Elbow when, it's, when it was over. But this was bad. They only popped for the, the whole slip through the cage thing. But this was bad. And Enzo just gets his head kicked off just because after climbing off of the cage. So yeah, wh where do we go from there? I, I have no idea. Hopefully this feud is over. Because that was bad. That was horrible. And you can tell by the crowd. They did not care. Uh, another match, which we'll get, this is just kind of bad, uh, but um, they just show someone Curry and Daniel Bryan doing just and no chance. But Randy Orton versus Rusev, which Randy Orton killed Rusev in 10 seconds after Rusev attacked him. RKO out of nowhere, it's over. Stick a fork in Rusev. Okay, I don't know where you go with this guy from here. You fed him to Cena already, and you saw how that went with that flag match. And now he gets killed by Randy Orton in 10 seconds? Yeah, it's like my friend told me tonight. The Barrio brothers have killed Rusev, Cena, and Orton, okay? And some people think it's going to be a shake-up again. What do you do, put him back on Raw? We just took him off Raw. And he was hurt, and then you put him on SmackDown. Cena destroys him in a flag match, which is obvious. And then Randy Orton makes a worse thing by doing RKO and taking seconds, and it was over. Personally, I don't think people would have cared for this match anyway, because Randy Orton is boring, but... My God, man, it's just, just, they've killed Rusev so many times. This is not making any sense at this point. And he, he is, like, buried, okay? Like, I don't know what to say about him. That's why I'm saying stick a fork in this guy. How do you come back from this? Ten seconds? Ten seconds? I, 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 don't, I don't know where you just go from that. Like, that's, it's, been, it's been double murder for Rusev. Like, seriously, double murder for him. So they, they buried this guy, okay? Ten-second match. Uh, next was the women's match, the Raw one for the women's title, Alexa Bliss versus Sasha. As Sasha came out, uh, poor Bailey just got booed out the building as Bailey wished a good luck, and he went Raw created for that because now nobody gives a crap about Bailey anymore that it's gotten that bad. But Alexa Bliss and Sasha, once again, a good match, but I feel like the finish was somewhat odd and very anticlimactic. Like, the match wasn't that bad, but I, I like, you know, Sasha, I'm kind of glad she won the title and she got the, uh, the bank statement after two times to get it, and, you know, four-time champion now, but it was just something very anticlimactic about this match that didn't sit right in a way. Like, it was okay, and I saw Sasha was getting booze out there, too, and a lot of cheers for Alexa, but 
I knew Sasha had the win, really, because she should have the title shot to begin with instead of Bailey getting in. We saw what happened from there. So I don't mind that Sasha actually won the belt. This is kind of an anticlimactic, and once again, crowd was very dead for it. Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt, uh, Demon Finn Balor, which is kind of cool. You make fun of got the whole word in my hands thing. And he came out there, Demon, which is probably one of the best reactions of the night, which the crowd woke up on. They did the Demon thing, and, you know, after that, the match just kind of went on, and Phelps didn't seem to care, but after Wyatt did his little crawl thing. And this is another example of 50 50 booking right here. Balor pretty much rolls up then, hits some sling blades, um, shotgun drop kick into the rope, coup de, coup de gras for the win, Finn Balor wins. So the whole demon thing got a big pop. You know, it's going to happen just because cause, um, it, somebody had to wake this crowd up. And I'm glad the demon Finn Balor did it. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was really good to um, see that go down. But once again, 50 50 booking. Wyatt wins Monday. Um, Finn wins here. Just demon version of him, and that's it. Uh, next was probably one of the best matches of the night, which I, I was um, Sheamus and Cesaro versus Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, which Seth Rollins looked like Ermac from Mortal Kombat, or a Power Ranger, or even Deadpool it looked like, if you want to keep getting the red and black references all night. Um, pretty much the mini shield when against Sheamus and Cesaro, which was one of the best tag matches of the night. And I, I don't know, some people think it was a planned spot. I don't think it was, but we know how the beach balls are thrown into the match. But Cesaro got pissed. He went in the crowd and tore off the beach ball. Now, I know people are going to say, like, fans should be throwing a beach ball in the beginning because it's disrespectful to the wrestlers and put it on the line. And in this, in this instance, yes, because this is a really good match. Now, this was a match that sucked like the Enzo and Cass and Big Show thing. I would have thrown a beach ball. And yeah, I, I don't. I think I would have been on the beach ball side with the people and stuff because they've been doing this to, after WrestleMania now. But I don't think it was a planned spot. And somebody, oh, it's an American beach ball and stuff. So I don't know. So some people think Cesaro is a hero for killing the beach ball because he got a big reaction. Wasn't really booed at to get heat. It looked he got he was praised because he they stopped the beach ball. I guess fans find it annoying. Personally, I think the beach ball is funny and stuff. And they better be brought this on themselves because they made a whole episode about the beach ball. So, yeah. If you're going to use the beach ball, use the beach ball for matches that suck and you want to hijack the crowd. Don't use it on a great match where the people are into it. And it was kind of cool coming into the end of this match. with um, Some people think Cesaro was in this match 90% of the time in Sheamus. But when it came and Rollins hit multiple super kicks. Um, and then he hit Sheamus with a... Rainmaker slash V trigger. So it's pretty much setting up the Rainmaker move and then like the V trigger that Kenny Omega does. And then Ambrose hit Dirty Deeds. And once again, that's another title change for you. The, uh, the new tag team titles, the Raw ones, Sheamus and, not Sheamus, uh, Ambrose and Rollins. And they did the fist thing and pretty much mini shield right there. And it was great. The finishing sequence was hot. All right. And I was like, the crowd was dying off a little bit. Like the highlights of this thing was the ending part and the Sheriff Cesaro beating up the beach ball. But this this was a great match. The tag teams are killing it, okay? Tag teams are killing it. Like, for real. And just to say about the women's match, I feel like it was, I still think it was tough for them. So, if you're going to go with the women's match out the weekend, it's going to be um, Asuka and Ember Moon. They had the best match. So, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn kind of hands out easily wins that one. But, you know, the tag team match was great. New tag team champions. Just hella tag type ch changes tonight title changes everywhere two women's champions two tag team champions cruiserweight champion so lots and lots of tag changes next was aj styles versus kevin owens for the u.s title which shane mcmahon's special guest referee is shane was kicked all over the place most of the time and even kevin owens says you could fall off a building but you can't get up and count to three <clears throat> which um was a really good match that uh, Shane was arguing with AJ Styles and Kevin Owens throughout the whole thing, but uh, when it came in, uh, Owens got the pop-up powerbomb and couldn't get it, but then after that, AJ Styles pretty much uh, pretty much hit him with a, um, what was it, um, I mean, he with a um, Pele kick, if I remember, and then he hit with a phenomenal forearm, and then a Styles clash, 
and got the win. So AJ Styles was probably one of the only people tonight still to retain the championship. Dude, I think this match was good. Yes, it was a really good match, but, you know, we go back into that whole argument. And like I said, throughout the whole night, the crowd did not care. All right, crowd just looked like they were not giving no fucks about this whole show, it looked like. And I, like I said, it's just weird how um, NXT take over Brooklyn. It's like a huge ovation all night. But then this crowd just kind of got dead the next night. And I think you can tell who, who the hardcore fans and the regular fans were. But this was a night where fans just kind of stopped caring. But I, I think AJ and Shane was a good match. So it was good. But most likely we're going to see Shane versus Kevin Owens in a um, some match soon in the, in the night. Uh, next was the WWE Championship on the line. Jinder Mahal versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, they did a package for him, which was a pretty good package. But Jinder and Shinsuke, which Nakamura's violinist came out. Lee Ingram Jr., I believe, is the same guy. Which I, I always love that entrance. It's just, just great to me. It's just an awesome entrance. that I, I, I love it. Um, next was... After we went into this match, after the Shinsuke entrance, uh, Jinder came out. Um, the match went on, and, you know, I've already, I don't need to keep repeating the whole crowd thing, but it was funny when they chanted 3MB because they chanted 3MB at Drew Galloway the night before at uh, Brooklyn TakeOver, so um, Jinder got a 3MB chant and they sang Nakamura's song, which this match was just not good. Okay, first off, this match was mediocre. But when, you know, I know they kept cutting to the Japanese and the Indian tables, but for well, a WWE title match, this was not a really good one. And as Shinsuke was killing uh, Jinder, next thing you know, the same brothers get involved, he hits multiple Kinshasa's on them. But then, which is the weird thing, Mahal just does this little, little finisher, which looked really sloppy, and Shinsuke didn't kick out, and... Jinder Mahal is the first person to beat Shinsuke Nakamura clean? Jesus Christ, how stupid was that? And this is a really thing that just kind of puzzled your head and really pissed people off tonight was this match. You know, I thought the Enzo and the whole cast of Big Show thing was bad, but this was really bad, okay? So let, let's get this straight. Like, it was the same lazy finish with the Singh brothers getting involved, but the fact that Nakamura didn't kick out the one finisher, this guy could take three FUs from Cena, but he couldn't kick out one finisher by Mahal, like this match was not over, gender is not over, the fact that the first loss from Shinsuke is now to gender makes no sense, like this thing made no sense, this is one of, one of the most disappointing things ever, and I, and I said before, I felt like Shinsuke had to carry Jinder Mahal throughout this whole match anyways, this was just a, just a bad WWE title match, and you know, we didn't have any money in the bank to go off of that too, somebody could have cashed in with Corbin, but we knew that wasn't happening now, but this was just just awful. Okay, this was this was bad, like really disappointingly bad. I just thought it was so stupid when Shinsuke lost to one finisher. This was stupid. And it was the same finisher the way that they've done with Randy Orton with the Singh brothers too. So I, I I just think all of this was dumb. This this was dumb. This match just made no sense, and I just thought it made it was just idiotic that Shinsuke lost clean. This is retired gender. It's just not working. I don't know why they're continuing this whole thing to get a retitle. Do we see another match in the future for these two? Most likely, yes. Hopefully, they get the belt off of them. But this was just a dumb move. This was a very dumb move. Uh, main event time, Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman versus Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. Which was actually was one of the best matches of the night. Which was insane. Carnage, destruction, blood, everything. And it lived up to every expectation. With every man beating the living hell out of each other. From Strowman killing Brock Lesnar out there. Putting him through two announce tables. And then lifting the announce table over him. People were going, holy shit, this is awesome. And at the, at the Roman, not Roman, um, you know, Lesnar was in suplexes everywhere. Even Roman spearing Lesnar through the barricade as Joe was choking him. And Joe dodged it. And you know, I'll say it's about Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe did good too, but I feel like he was just coming in and out at some points because most of the focus was on either Strowman. Strowman was the MVP tonight. People were chanting Strowman. He destroyed Brock, Brock Lesnar. They had the EMT medical team, which I think it was a little bit too much now because I knew Brock Lesnar was coming back. So you, you just kind of knew that already. And steel steps that Roman hit him with the steel steps that um, Strowman's like 
side of his ear was bleeding and stuff. Like, it was insane. And, you know, the funny thing is that Roman is the only face out there, but he's getting booed out of the building, and the rest of these guys are supposed to be heels. So, Strowman just hitting multiple power slams on people. Joe trying to get the Kikina clutch on Lesnar, but Lesnar at five of them was going to get it, and the range got him out of there. Now, there was one thing that people were chanting tonight was Undertaker, because a lot of people expected Undertaker to come out tonight. I don't think he was. I think he's going to show up sooner or later to get his payback on Roman Reigns, most likely tomorrow night. But he just, um, he, he, he was just destruction out there. Roman was just doing his best to hit Superman punches on everybody, but... He, he just kept hitting them and they got Strowman out of there as Brock knocked him out of the ring somehow and just hit him with multiple knees and tried to suplex him. They did like 10 and 11 suplexes out there. But as um, Roman hit three, um, he hit three Superman punches on him. He's going to go for the spear. Brock Lesnar catches him with the F5. Brock retains the Universal Championship. This was insane. This was crazy. Um, Strowman was the MVP out of this. There was destruction. There was chaos. There was office chairs being thrown all over the place. This this was insane. Roman taking the pin. I got no problem with that. Because if, if Joe would have took another pin from Lesnar again, it would look worse. Strowman could not be beaten right here. Because Roman's already beaten him. So Strowman couldn't, get the, couldn't have the pin on him. So Roman was the best choice. <laughs> Choice. I don't know what's gonna happen on Raw tomorrow night, but I can tell it's gonna be a lot of things. So like I said, you saw people chanting Undertaker out there, so he's gonna probably get his payback on Reigns or something. You thought he was screwed him out of the title tonight, but we got a clean finish out of this, a chaos and destruction to end this show. But the overall show itself, personally, at this thing NXT Brooklyn three once again was a better show. They beaten SummerSlam two years ago in a row, and I'm gonna tell you the reason why. First off, I kind of gave this show, and I was trying to come up with a debate for this or what the grade was. I pretty much was going to give it here a 2.5 out of 5, or even a 2.8 out of 5. And I'm going to tell you why. There was only really three or four good matches, really. It was both the tag team matches, the Raw and SmackDown one. Those are the really great tag team matches. The main event um, for the, the Fatal 4-Away. And I want to say 2.8 just because I thought... Um, Kevin Owens and AJ had a good match, at least a 2.8, but I pretty much stuck with a 2.5 because a lot of this was bad. Crowd did not care. You saw a lot of title changes in a way, which I didn't even expect a lot of title changes. And like I said, very bad crowd reactions. Uh, burials out there between people like um, Rusev or Corbin. I don't even want to put Tozawa in that category. But it, once again, it's just odd 50-50 booking. We had lots of 50-50 bookings tonight that did not make a sense. The worst match of the night was Big Show and um, Cass. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura getting beaten by Jinder Mahal in this mediocre-ass WWE title match was just very bad, too. It, it was just a lot of bad things in this show that you had to go with NXT TakeOver being the winner of this entire weekend. Like, seriously, and my, my God, I was about to even say the G1 uh, from last week was better than this. So, you know, you saw a lot of bad in this show, okay? You really did. It was just some God-awful stuff that just did not make a lot of sense. And it, it was horrible, okay? It was just freaking horrible out there. So, I, I, I had to give the win to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, really. And, you know, you can add that because, you know, Adam Cole and... um. Red Dragon showed up, so if you want to see my review of that, check that out, but I think SummerSlam was a 3 to 4 match show, like anything over a 3, like if you put it, if anybody puts it a 3, that's debatable, but anything over a 3, it does not deserve, okay, this show is not even over a 3, that's why we either went with a 2.5, which most likely I'm going to stick with, or B 2.8, just because of the Kevin Owens and AJ match, but Mostly 2.5. It was a, literally a 3 to 4 match show. Alright. But. Yeah. It was just either anticlimactic. Um, bad matches. Burials. Lots of title changes. I, I, I don't know people are going to look at them saying like the title changes were a complaint. I just didn't expect every title to nearly change nearly. Almost every title did change. 
Like we saw a lot of title changes tonight. So you just didn't really expect that. Um, and like I said, from people like Rusev or Corbin or others being buried on this show tonight, or fans once again sitting on their hands, didn't that care? This is Brooklyn folks, so you think they'd be loud in this, but they got loud as hell for the main event in the tag team matches. I'll say that. And somewhat behind AJ, but it's like, and even the demon thing, but it's like after the entrance thing, the crowd just dies down, does not care, and they don't give a fuck no more. And I'm repeating throughout myself, and I'm just trying to pull up all the bullet points throughout this whole thing. Like, the worst match of the night was the um, uh, Big Cast versus Big Show, and if I want to put the one of the best matches of the night, I'd probably have to go with the Fatal 4 Way or both tag team matches as one. So, um, yeah, that's SummerSlam tonight, folks. It wasn't an easy journey. We sat here all night. Um, Power Ranger, <laughs> uh, Seth Rollins, I think that's funny, or Ermac, or, um, a Red Lance, I think that was still funny too, but I'm out of here, I'll see you guys later, peace, there will be live reactions, including this review, so I'm out of here, I'll see you guys later, peace out.